Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to talk about some really fantastically useful chord grips that I call the Stuck 3-4 chords. Now, other people seem to call them the Wonderwall chords because they're the chords that are used in Wonderwall. Whatever you're going to call them, the basic idea is that we're going to keep our third and fourth fingers in the third fret of the thinnest two strings throughout a whole bunch of different chords. Now, this makes some of the chord changes a lot easier and some of them a little harder. It has a very unique sound to it as well because you get this kind of drone effect which is called when we have these two notes ringing out the same most of the way through. Uh, they're very commonly used in rock, particularly kind of that 90s rock, you know, Guns N' Roses and Poison and that kind of era stuff was very, very popular. That's where I first encountered uh, using them. They're just a fantastic set of chords to learn for kind of advancing beginners. Maybe not, shouldn't be the first chords that you learn, but once you've got through your basic grips, these are a really fantastic set of chords to get a handle on. So let's get to a close up and check them out. So let's take a look at what I call the big G. If you've come from my regular beginners course, you're probably playing G like this right now with just the second and the third finger and you're muting the fifth string. That's a fine way to play G. For this particular one, what we're going for is using the third and fourth fingers on the thinnest two strings on the third fret. So they should actually be kind of touching each other. They should be kind of connected and resting in the third fret, thinnest two strings. First finger is going to go down in the second fret of the fifth string, where it would normally go if you were playing a kind of a standard uh, G chord. And then second finger is going down in the third fret of the thicker string. <laughs> sounds like this. Now you can definitely lift off your first finger, we're going to talk about that a little more in a second, but just to talk about this chord shape again for a, a little minute just to iron out some things. Now firstly, you're probably going to want to start by putting your third and fourth fingers down and finding a nice place for them. You want to be using your fingertips and you don't want to let the fingers fall flat, right? Particularly the third finger, you might find that your third finger knuckle wants to kind of fall down like that. You want to try and keep it round all of the time, right the way through all of these chord grips, you're trying to keep the third finger on its tip and not let it go like that. Many of you are going to have that problem. I had it when, when I was learning the left, doing the left handed thing, my third finger kept folding down like that. So you really want to try and keep those fingers nice and round all the time, you know, that, you know, curled up. So work on that a little bit. What you might find as well, where I found you might find it too, is that I started pressing really hard with my third finger for some reason. It was almost like it was trying to compensate for the fact that I was using my little finger, which you've, at this stage, you might not have used your little finger much. And you're going to find your little finger gets pretty painful pressing down there. So just be aware of the pressure. You want to press enough to get a good note. Right, to get the note clear. Again, that's some a lot down to do with position. You don't want to have the fingers right at the back of the fret there. You're going to have to press too hard. So trying to get them right up close to the fret there and just experiment a little bit to find a way where they're both sitting comfortably and the fingers are nice and connected with each other. They're sitting on top of one another touching. Okay, Then put the first finger down then the second finger. Try to make sure that the tip of the first finger is down as well. Again, if you let that go too flat, you're going to mute the fourth string. Okay, and then the second finger again on the tip. If you let it lay down too flat, you're going to mute that fifth string anyway. So just spend a little bit of time, get the placement of the third and fourth fingers down, then the first finger, then the second finger, all nicely on the tips. Give it a strum, pick out the notes one at a time, Okay, if you find that you've got some of this sort of stuff going on where it sound, might sound like this. You need to go through and pick them out. Okay, that one just needs to press harder. Oh, that's muted, so lift up the third, second finger a bit. There we go. Make sure the second, first finger is on the tip. You might just be not pressing hard enough with the third finger. Go through all of those little checks and make sure that you've got that chord sounding sweet before you start on any other ones. Now, I already mentioned that you can lift off your first finger, just like we did for my kind of standard G chord. Now, if you're going to play this one, I call this a rock G. This is what you'd play if you were playing like an ACDC song or something. You'd probably play your G chord like that. It sounds great on electric guitar with distortion, this particular one. It's a very, very cool chord. Now, for any of you doing my music theory course, you might notice something if you know the names of the notes. This is the note G, nothing on that string, on the fifth string. D, G, 
D, G. So it's actually only D's and G's. The correct name for this chord would be a G5. You could call this one an open power chord, but you could still use it to replace pretty much any time you've got a G chord. You could play this instead, or this, or this, or that. Any of those would be acceptable replacements for a G chord when it just says G in the sheet music. So how do you know which G to play? If it says G in a song, well, how do you know? There's now four different choices. In fact, there's another one we'll get to a little later where you use your third and fourth fingers only. Now, you're going to use different ways of playing G depending on what the song is. Okay, so in different songs and different circumstances, you're going to use different ways of playing a G chord. Later on, you can learn how to play a G as a bar chord, like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. They're all different Gs. There's loads of different approaches to playing a G chord. So as you progress on your journey, you're going to learn lots of different ways of playing G and every other chord, and then you're going to learn circumstances to use them in. Now, this one with the two fingers down is a particularly interesting one because of all of these other chord shapes that you can use that work really well, make the changes easy from this G chord. So let's have a look at the first one of those, which is starting on the full G, the big G, if you move your first and second fingers down one string, so now the second finger is muting the thicker string, second finger is down third fret on the fifth string, first finger is on the second fret of the fourth string, open G string, third and fourth fingers as they were. This is called a C add nine chord. This note here is the ninth note of the C major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine where we get its name from, doesn't matter. This is just a replacement for a C chord. If you've got a C chord and a piece of music, you can nearly always drop in a C add nine instead. You have to use your ears and have a listen. Sometimes you go, oh, didn't sound really good in this particular song, so you just stop doing it, right? That's the easy way to do it. So this is a C add nine. Really good thing to practice is just changing from the G, move those two fingers down, and have a go at playing the C add nine. Just from one to the other. Now again, I would quite commonly play that G, kind of rock G, to C add nine. You don't always have to be doing those, you know, the two fingers moving together there. You might find sometimes you go from the rock G to a C add nine, and that's totally fine as well. So the next chord we're going to check out is a D sus4. It is basically a D chord, but we left our third and fourth fingers down where they were on the thinnest two strings. You don't need to put your second finger down because that note is kind of covered by the little finger anyway. It doesn't make any difference if second finger was down or not. You might find it easier to put it down initially just to because it's a, then a familiar shape. But really, you just need your first finger down. We're still just playing the thinnest four strings. Though. Okay, so now we've got this G, C, and D. C, G. I think you'll agree that's an easier set of changes than G, C, D, C. That has a whole lot of movement going on. There's lots of things to, you know, lots of movement for the fingers. Whereas here, you can see it's a lot easier to play this particular sequence, the G, C, and D, which is a very, very common set of chords. You'll find hundreds of songs that use just G, D, and C. And particularly when we combine in a couple of these other chords that we can play along with it as well. It's a really nice set. So this one should be pretty easy. We're not going to play the thickest two strings. If you accidentally play the fifth string, it doesn't really sound bad, but you don't want to play the thicker string when you're playing your D sus4 chord. I should point out as well that D sus4 chord you can nearly always use when you've got a regular D. So if it says D in the music, you can nearly always play it if you stay on it, it has a different effect. This suspended sound, we're going to talk a bit more later in the course about what exactly suspension means and how it works, but you can hear it kind of goes... It wants to resolve, it wants to go down to the D. And interestingly, in this set of chords, you'll quite often find that it sounds better to play a regular D. So you might find that you're using G, C, 
to D regular. So you've lifted the little finger off just for the D chord and then you put it back for the others. That's a real common thing to do. But because you've got that third finger anchor, moving between those and playing a regular D is still actually pretty easy to do. So you don't have to worry about it too much. You can either play regular D or D sus4. Again, you have to use your ears when you're playing these songs. Some songs will kind of want those fingers to be stuck there for the whole time. Other ones it'll sound a bit better if you go to a regular D instead of a D sus4. And there's more still. We're next checking out an A7 sus4. Now this one, we're using our first and second fingers in the second fret on the fourth and third strings. So we're not gonna play the thicker string, open fifth string, first finger down, second fret on the fourth string, second finger down, second fret on the third string, third fingers where they were before. The name of this chord is A7 sus4. You wouldn't normally substitute this if it just had A in the sheet music, although in some songs it'll sound great, If especially songs where there's lots of this stuck three and four going on anyway, this would be a great substitute for the A chord, but you will find sometimes it just doesn't quite kind of work. You can't just substitute it any time you like for a regular A chord. Do be aware that the first finger is probably going to be further back from the fret than it usually would be, so you might have to press a little harder with the third finger. And also you might find that the separation between the second and third finger gets a little bit difficult here. Uh, I definitely found that on my left-handed one. Uh, right-handed it feels really natural and comfortable and easy, but left-handed I know it didn't. So you're probably going to find that that separating the second and third fingers is an awkward stretch just generally anyway. So just be aware of that and try and you know, well, you're going to have to practice it, frankly. That's the, that's the answer here. If you find it a little bit difficult, a little bit stretchy, which you're likely to, yeah, the answer here is going to be some practice. Now, I'm going to explain another common variation of this one as well, which is the one that's used in Wonderwall, which is actually lifting off the second finger. We're just changing the note that's doubled here because the open G and the note played by the little finger is the same note. So, it, especially going from D, to A7 sus, then you just have to move the first finger over and that's it. So you end up, that's a very, very nice little sequence to have the D to the A, like that. You just, you know, very, very simple. Open, second, open, third, third. Okay, so it's still an A7 sus4. Whether the second finger is down or not, they sound slightly different, but they're still an A7 sus4 would be the name of that particular chord. And there's more. This chord is really useful, used in loads of songs that use the stuck 3-4, and it's called an E minor 7. Now, we've got the third and fourth fingers, as usual, stuck on the thinnest two strings. First finger's going down, second fret on the fifth string. Second finger's down, second fret on the fourth string. We are going to play the open thicker string. So we end up with open, second fret, second fret, open, third fret, third fret. You might find it a little tricky getting that second finger pointed enough. You, a lot of people mute that third string, so it's one thing to be aware of. And you're probably going to find this pretty difficult. When I was doing my left-handed thing, I found doing this stretch here between the second and the third finger was really, really hard. It was awkward, it felt uncomfortable, and it also really cooked the muscle here. This, this one here between my thumb and my first finger, oh man. It was really, really getting sore. In fact, it kind of is still when I'm practicing this chord left-handed. It's just, obviously it's on this hand, but it, man, it really hurts. Now, this is actually part of the reason why I'm doing this set of chords in this particular place, because next lesson, we've got a chord that requires a lot of strength here with this muscle. So part of what I want you to do is to build up that muscle by practicing these chords and having to go at some of these songs, keeping that thumb behind, you're gonna work that muscle out and it's gonna make the next lesson's new chords a little easier. So there is kind of method here. I've, I've given this a little bit of thought. Um, so try and avoid the temptation of letting thumb grab around the top. I know when you see me playing stuff, you're, you're often gonna see thumb creeping around. Sometimes I even use it to play notes, but I don't recommend that you'd be doing that at this stage. Soon we'll be getting into how and why that works, but just not yet, don't, don't go there. So this is the E minor 7 chord. 
Again, you just want to practice doing this, particularly changing with the other chords. Now you've got a whole, a nice little set to practice. We'll be going G to C to D to A to E minor. Okay, I know that these have all got fancy names, so this would be G, this is a C add 9, this is a D sus 4, this is an A7 sus 4, and this is an E minor 7. But you can just think of it as going G, C, D, A, and E minor. That as a little set is a really great thing to practice. Because like one minute changes here, just going say like that, it, it, it might have a place, it might be useful, but what I would recommend when you're practicing is just literally going through that little sequence and checking all the notes. We're not dedicating like one minute to each specific grip. I just want you to spend, you know, three minutes or so just checking all of the chords and a couple of the variations I'm going to discuss in a second. And just making sure that all, each of the chords sounds good and trying to fix any problems that you might find. After maybe three or four or five practices on that, you might find that, hey, I, I really need some extra one minute changes practice here, particularly maybe getting to these stuck three fours, like doing say A minor, which doesn't really have a stuck three four version, to G. So doing, you might decide, okay, I'm gonna change my practice routine from being three minutes just working on all of these chords generally to a specific change that you're struggling with in a song, for example. So at this, you know, grade two guitar players wanna be aware of their practice routine and what things they wanna work on, what songs they're playing and how that's gonna affect the things that they're gonna practice. There's a couple more chords that I wanna take you through. They're less commonly used, but as we're going through all of the stuck three, four chords, I felt the completest in me wanted to discuss them. This is the first one. This is called a, a D11 slash F sharp chord, I guess. It's basically a D with an F sharp bass, but because we've got the third and fourth fingers down, I have to give it a new fancier name. I've chosen add 11, it could be D sus4 slash F sharp, but then the sus4 means take away the third, and we've got the third in the bass. Ah, it doesn't really matter, it's just a, a new chord. The, the, the reason that this chord exists, and where you're likely to find it, is moving between G and E minor. So having G, uh, G D with an F sharp bass, to E minor or the other way around. It's a moving chord. We want this. That's what we're aiming for, is this sound. Okay, you're gonna find it in that kind of thing where you've got. That's a real common movement. You can see it's nice going from the G, the fingers separate. Okay, so first finger's going down, second fret, thicker string. It's muting the fifth string. Now it doesn't have to mute the fifth string, but it's really awkward to not mute it. So I tend to mute it nearly every time. Open fourth string, second fret, finish two strings, third fret as usual, okay? So that's, let's just call it D with an F sharp bass, rather than D11 over F sharp, it's a bit long-winded. And then to get to the E minor, the two fingers come together. So that's a real nice thing to practice, is just the first and second fingers moving out and then back together. This is a lovely chord, D with an F sharp bass, with the, with the stuck 3-4. You will find that it's pretty common, especially in this movement, like I said, going from G, instead of going G, D, E minor, you're much more likely to find G, D with an F sharp bass, to E minor. And there's one more, just one more chord. Now this one is a lot less common than the other ones. It's this, but it's nice. This is an F69 chord, it's called. Uh, it's the same as the C add nine, but we've moved it down one string. If we're playing this chord, we definitely don't want to play the thickest two strings. They sound really horrible. Just a horrible sounding chord when you do that. So make sure the tip of your second finger there is muting the fifth string and then just avoid playing the thicker string. So this is uh, starting on the fourth string, second, uh, third fret, second fret, third fret, third fret. OK, 
Okay, it's an F, a type of F chord. We're going to talk a little bit more about F very soon, but it's just a nice one to have if you're doing this kind of. There's lots of songs that have got this kind of C, F, G, F little idea. So you can, it's a nice little cheater around an F chord if it's one that you're going to struggle with. Again, we'll talk more about F chord very, very soon. So this one is called an F69 chord, less common than the other ones, but still a useful one to have under your fingers. So I already gave you a little chord sequence that I recommend that you practice. You definitely want to spend some time just working on all of the different chords and making the changes between them, but then start to look at the songs that you want to play and the specific chord grips that are used in the songs that you like and work on those ones. Because some of these variations like the F chord, you might not encounter that for a little while. So there's no sense spending loads of time practicing it. Same with the D with the F sharp bass. You may choose to get into using it, you might not. That's an optional one, but definitely I'd recommend doing some practice on that little chord movement of the G to the C to the D to the A to the E minor and just cycling around that little sequence because it's very, very common. And there are some awesome songs that we're gonna learn this lesson that use exactly those shapes. Have some fun.